Does anybody have any questions, observations, things that they're like, dislike about the con? Sword fighting, anything? Say what? Making conversation? <laughs> Taking up time? Small talk? Me talk. talk. What do you want? What are swords made out of? What are swords made out of? That's a good one. That's a great one. That's a great one. Short answer, they're made out of steel. Long answer, they're made out of very special steel. Spring steel. So they will all flex. I'm sure, once I have this on camera, I'm sure the hotel will not like that. But all swords should be flexible. Um, this particular one is made out of 5160 spring steel. Same thing as your leaf springs in your car. And that is the magic of what makes a sword a sword, not just a bar of steel. Any other questions, ideas, problems, answers? Yes. Literally the exact same. My huh? friend of mine made a couple of daggers from the spring out, mm -hmm. out of his old Chevy. 5160. Same stuff for the same reason. Of course, it's sort of twisted, so. Right. right. There you go. Okay. Not the spring, the leaf springs. Oh, we'll see that the spring he misunderstood. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's like the most deadly course too. So, most, yes. in your personal opinion, what culture had the best sword making oh. technique? Oh, alrighty. It depends on when or you're talking about. Um, part of the reason that everybody seems to think that the, the Japanese had the best sword making technique is uh, they had a limited resources because they were actually xenophobic and didn't have anything that was not on their island. Um, the Norse were making swords from two different grades of steel. Uh, they twisted it. In the, uh, and they also put, a demonstration here, down the middle would have been a Damascus. It would have been called Damascus, but it's a twisted and folded and pounded of two different grades. Basically, a filler makes it softer, absorbs vibration, and um, absorbs shock. The outside edge actually was a nice piece of high-grade steel. And the reasons behind that was because you can only make a piece of steel not that big. It was all the same kind of stuff. Um, when the Europeans... Um, the continent got something that was very close to being a blast furnace, maybe not quite. You could make a piece of steel that was all the same stuff about this big, which you can beat up and turn into a sword. Um, Japanese had the blast furnace, but they also had a tradition, and because of the xenophobic nature, they kept the same thing. They never had to fight anybody new with new ideas. When they did, well, the typhoon got the Mongols, and what happened with the second time? Uh, actually, they, they, they started up with the trade agreement on the second time, wasn't it? Yeah, the next time was the Russians. I can't remember. The Europeans had something. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that we have so many sword techniques and traditions that came from Japan, because, well, it was... In a way, it was stagnant. Nothing changed. Everything was the same. You can look at armor for a thousand, well, five, six hundred years. Nothing changed. It gets a little bit better. It gets a little bit different. Uh, but it all looks straight up very similar. Um, don't get me wrong. It's a wonderful way to preserve culture. It's one of the only ones that is preserved that way. It's the first time that somebody said, hey, man, I can make this sword better. Everybody goes, really? Cool. Figured it out. Did it. So, long story short, um, metallurgically, the best swords are actually produced right now. But historically, um, it'd be hard to say. Hard to say. It really would. Japanese were in there. Um, Spanish, and some of the Italian. Later period, later period Italian, earlier period Spanish. Anyway, anything else?
Can you use a katana to cut through a car? <laughs> um, well, you, oh, that's all. This, this is where this discussion goes. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yes. You can do all the upholstery with it. Um, no. Uh, katana is a cutting machine, but it will not do the magical, mystical things that people attribute to them. They are very good swords, and they do very amazing things. We'll show in a minute. All right. So, let's get to cutting things, since we talked about cutting in cars. I'd like a volunteer to bring a car in here, please. Oh, sorry. Oh. I used it for archery though. Repeatedly. An arrow right. stuck in the door. Repeatedly. The scary bit is that a good strong bow will penetrate some steel. A arrow has an amazing amount of penetration, and that's really all that matters. Whereas a gun, the, in, the um, impact will spread out fairly quickly, which is very difficult to stop, but the collateral damage is all absorbed. An arrow might go through you. All right. Never seen one of those here. Is photography okay in the demonstration? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the flash goes off and I drop the sword, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I'm going to build to the bottom We're like 40 yards away from the sword. Actually, let me move the So that when my students learn how to do this, they don't knock divots out of tables that people would like to keep. Um, and I'm sure that the hotel would rather me not knock divots out of that. Thank you. I can. Uh, guys against the wall. We are very tight in here, so please. We will show demonstrate broad sword, bass steel, and that's actually a cut and thrust sword, but it operates like a long sword. The katana, and we will also um, fight with the practice weapons that correspond to these. We'll also fight with um, the rapier, or we'll use a double white epic. I don't actually have a target that would demonstrate a rapier very well in here. That wouldn't leave a very big mess. You know, have to see something running out of it. Hit pumpkins and get messy. Anywho, broadswords did cut. They weren't just applying sword to side of head. And uh, caving it in. Don't, don't get me wrong, later period, the armor did that. But the broadsword was really designed to cut. And it does cut. And <laughs> let us saw this. Funny thing is about mailing tubes, don't take these off. That thing ruptures like a can of biscuits, it just unrolls. <laughs> All right, um, when I do this demonstration outside, we have little clips to keep it from blowing away in the wind. That is not doing anything to hold it there while I cut. This is all gravity. All right. <laughs> Stand clear. Fine, God. Too bad. It won't cut quite as clean as a katana will. It will do other things that katanas won't. That's all right. Oh, that's it. Yeah, there is a geometry to it. So, let's do something else. Let's see if this thing's cool with that. Now, historically, Claymore, or Claymore is just Celtic for big sword. For a while, this was a Claymore. After a while, the big. Two-handed was a claymore. They actually both held the name sometime in history. But the basket hilt was used for quite a long time in Scotland. Um, I don't know if it was tradition or the fact that they didn't have a whole lot of money. But they have been mounted with broad swords, which do not taper like this and are almost the same width like that one was almost the same width at the top as on the bottom. Or it tapers in a cut and thrust. 
Later period sword, it still cuts. Also, we'll get in between armor and have a little bit of thrusting ability to it. Um, by the time a cut and thrust sword came around, it was not the primary weapon on the battlefield. Well, sword never really was. Spear held that most of the time. But, earlier, Middle Ages, uh, Battle of Hastings kind of, kind of time, sword did just fine against chainmail, worked really well. So, I'm going to cut with this one. Once again. Okay, I need to sharpen this out. Yeah, it does it, but it's a little bit there. Any questions about this cutting? Because here in a minute we're going to break out the, the swords and the shields and do a little practice. Notice with the straight ones you don't have to do the draw that's uh, familiar with the katana fighting technique. Technically, I have to do it more so. But you won't hit a tailing blow. So we have to use practice weapons. All right? My plate costs two grand. It does. And chainmail turns swords into sticks. Sticks still hurt. Could very well break bone. But um, the thing about armor and looking at armor and looking at the swords, like your question about what was the best sword, comes from the fact that we look at history from up here 2,000 years down. We also look at the world as if it was today. With enough motivation and enough resources, you could be on the other side of the world tomorrow. You'd be there this afternoon, actually, I think. Or tonight. Um, that kind of resources and that kind of determination to be on the other side of the world would get you... maybe into the next state by the end of the night. So, you're looking at swords. Well, which this one versus this one? They might have been separated by hundreds of years and by thousands of miles. Never actually ever saw each other. To actually rate a sword or a weapon, you have to take it into the context of the day. What what armor was it going against? Who used it? How many of the people in the field had one? So, that sort of thing. So you have to look at it that way. Now, Chad here is already dressed. I'm putting on the gorget. For most of my classes, actually all of my classes, it's required for some, the heavier fighting simply because we're covering the nice soft parts here and up here. It's just a good idea. But, to bypass the problem of having everybody in armor, like the old SC boys do, they don't need to adjust that. They don't need to adjust that. <laughs> We've had the weapons. Very similar. <laughs> the whole idea actually is supposed to be the same. A yeah, balance point will be very similar also. I'll take time to use the washers to do that. Um, it will be lighter, just about a whole lot lighter. It won't cut. We have to make sure that we're on edge. We do that by feeling inside this. It's oval inside so I can feel where it's at. Okay? And it's up to the person to tell me, or I to tell them, we're on edge. You don't necessarily have to call every blow that bounces around, because we are assuming a historical context for this, of a little bit of chain mail, at least, possibly a nasal helmet. Um, but, for instructional purposes, yeah, you got me, you hit something. I should have stopped that is kind of my motivation personally, or whether I not or whether I take a blow or not. Um, just a bit of safety. Um, if anybody decides that we are too close to anything that you see, like a breakable lamp up there, uh, one wall or anything like that, 
Go hold. Say hold. It works. Everybody uses stop in normal language, so hold will get our attention a little bit easier. Okay? So we're going to fight a little bit. Okay. We're not going to move a lot, I'm afraid. Shield, 
We'll expand that and we cover long sword, ten and a half, some spear because well you have to deal with a spear coming at you because it was a very prevalent in the time period. But we don't have like room in time here. Uh, katana. This is not Bushido. This is a an observation of this is how katana works. This is how sword geometry works. This is how it operates. This is how we defend against it the best we can come up with. Um, it is a little bit. It's a lot of different from kendo because target areas are. Natural. I mean, boom, hit you. Yep, that would draw blood. You think you could have kept fighting with that? Watch how many people, when they cut their fingers to the bone, go, oh, yeah, yeah. Not, you know, you wouldn't fall with any terribly big wound. Shock would set in, that sort of thing. Um, but, so we, we go with what would have really happened, try to puzzle with that a little bit. Anyway. I'm going to turn it over here to Chad. Let him do his thing. Come out of your way over here. Better cut than, than the broadsword. It is. It is a better Today, cut. At least. <laughs> One of the reasons I did not choose the katana over top of the European weapon is that um, katana won't up with as much just brute beating and banging. It is a little bit more, a little more about finesse. A little more about finesse, not not as much about um, really dead stopping another blow. session sword against a sword would be idiot uh, because the cost of having a sword created back in the day would have cost a fortune and they would have been passed down generation to generation. It would usually be just a couple of quick strikes rather than sword against sword because what wasn't it the same that the first blow is the killing blow or you're not the skill a level so high that for for a for a fight to last five minutes with, with no one drawing any blood, you, you would either have to have two utter beginners or two great masters, one or the other. It would have to be very well matched in that way. Pretty much. A little bit would change a lot of that. The problem is, from start to first blood or a disabling blow or anything like that, you're looking at, what, 10, 15 seconds? Typically, if that, it's it's really it's really you know really short. It depends. Also, time period. Speaking time. of experience, because I finally, after buying too many uh, show pieces, I just hung on the wall and weren't mm -hmm. really functional. I finally purchased a full tang set, 440 steel, and I took them out, and trimmed the edges with them, and decided that they were they were real swords when I could cut through a three quarter inch piece of wood and, and keep going. Um, a friend of mine who was staying with me at the time uh, pulled out the wakasashi uh, and and I admittedly stupidly said haya with it like this while I was holding my sword and I just reflexively went on guard and the two swords came together sparks flew and took a nice chunk out of both swords and of course the cost to me nowadays in the modern world is like oh, okay a paycheck wasted on swords I just took a chunk out of but 
for a sword to be made back then by a master of a house, a, a fortune would be paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and to do something like that, you know, foolishly like that, just like just playing around would be. Yeah, it's relatively like owning a Range Rover. Yeah. Or, a, you know. An expensive car. Yeah. Um, like full armor for like a European horse armor and all that stuff, like like what it would take to get have a house right now. I mean, nice. Do sorry, Jeff. I'm going to split the whole stuff. It is split the whole stuff. Do story boy. Not in Fairview. No. Yeah. Maybe in Fairview, yeah. Oh, I can do this all day. Um, yeah, and you know. Let's demo. All right. Unless someone has any, any more questions. Ooh. Then I'll cut another two. Yeah, I'll cut another two. A couple strokes on this two. Yeah, when you find out how much. We said what we did about the cutting. Are you more happy that you nicked your sword? I'm happy that that you see. Hey, precisely, man. I can't pay for that kind of line of delivery. Um, That's the truth. So, I'm going from some of the European base information and using it. Um, on any of these swords, there is a wonderful thing called a sweet spot. It's up here. It's in the, from the middle part, to the top. It's the weak part of the blade. Actually, it's not terribly weak. It's just where you have no leverage. Your strong leverage is down here, strong part of the blade. All of your cutting is up here. All your blocking is down here. Center of percussion. Yes, center of percussion. So. Anybody really good at hitting a baseball? I'm just asking. That's right. So, we'll be blocking, but try and use, at least use part of the blade, stronger, closer to the uh, hilt. Uh, on broadsword, it's a little thicker. Here, it's about even, I guess. Is that why on some swords, um, 1250 to 1400, the bottom part of the blade wasn't actually sharpened? Yeah. And then the top part would be sharp because that's the killing section. The also, just for blocking. For some of the greater swords, it became a better leverage point. And because it, it did both, it was not sharpened, so it would yeah. be a better defending place. And you can grab it. But, um, anyway, I digress because he's going to whoop up on me. Alright, I'll let you stab me in the head one more time. That's it. That's it. 
goes out exponentially. I could probably put this blade into a steel 55 gallon drum. Definitely through a car door. Maybe one of those plastic ones. Plastic you know, eats up energy really quickly. Um, to do their job, and they don't cut very well, so if you know anything about point of percussion or anything like that, if not, I'll be happy to talk with you at length with it. One of these blades, it becomes a very narrow band. Also, the width here versus the thickness makes a blade geometry that is more like that than, say, on a broadsword or a katana, which is more like that. We'll cut more, open it up more. Cuts easier. Now, having said that, there was a historical reason to keep it sharp all the way down. The left hand. <laughs> Don't grab it. I can grab a hold of this thing, but if I moved it forward yes. or backwards, it would cut me to the bone. Okay? If I try to slice a tomato going straight down, won't do much if you go back and forth. Yep, oh, this yes. solves it right now. Now, and I'll keep it very oiled for that reason too, so that there's not a lot of tension <laughs> pulls off. However, we have actually tested this with a glove, very much like this one. <laughs> Hitting it from the side like that, even making a cut. I can wipe away the little marks there. They're gone. All right. Even at speed, even at just outrageous amount of bam, I'm laying it on there. We tried it with the gloves wrapped around a turkey leg. Well, had to have it. Wasn't gonna do it with my hand. <laughs> so, but without it, cut the turkey leg right down to the bone, wide open. So you can parry with your off hand as long as it is a glancing blow. If you grab it and it moves in the hand, it cuts you. Okay? If it sticks you in the hand, it sticks you. It might go into what's behind the hand. All right? But you can use your off hand to parry. So you may see these boys do this. I can pretty much guarantee Yeah, probably. Um, in both katana and broadsword, you will circle more. Granted, there's not a lot of circling happening in this room. Rapier, you will not as much because the slow moving on an angle on somebody, as soon as the other person pivots, it's back to a straight line. If there's not a terrain difference or a lighting difference, Putting the other guy, you know, higher, lower. Put him in to go for holes, getting the sun behind you. There's no real reason to do it. However, if you move off 
and then strike immediately, you get the advantage of your angle. So you'll see a little of that. Any questions? Or I just get out of their way. The uh, nice hat. style. Yes. Um, is it for decoration, a purpose? Both. Okay. It is a civilian weapon. So, article of clothing. It's an article of clothing. Personal taste. Personal taste. Um, vaguely analogous to um, pearl grips on your gun. <laughs> it's a status thing. But this was worn out. So there are different types, different okay. styles. Historically, it progressed just like cars and, you know, fenders and different things like that. But it all had to be a functional, defendable hilt. And, and culturally. And culturally, and culturally yes, difference. it did. Culturally, yes, yes. Different countries preferred different looks. Um, Spanish okay. preferred the cup hilt, and it right. came along much later. Mm -hmm. But the, the French and the Italians preferred the swept hilt. <laughs> Yeah, um, and there are hundreds of variants on these designs. It's just personal taste, and you know, well, you know, they didn't go to the Walmart and get a hundred sword. A sword maker probably made. I don't know when they make it. Say one a month. One a month. How many apprentices pounded in a? Well, there's that too. <laughs> Personally, I guess one per person per month would be about a, about right. Anyway, so I'm gonna let these boys fight. Um, if you want to, we can digress into some. Um, I've got an off hand weapon here. Yep, right, you have nice. Very good. Look at me. And if you want to, you can kill them while they're saluting, but that's not really. It's kind of frowned upon. That's frowned upon. Oh, uh, would you guys like to set cake corner? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Would you like to do cake corner for a little bit more distance? Yeah. Sword. yeah. Okay. Can everybody see? Yeah. All right. A little bit. That was a little bit in there, yeah. He's actually just back up the arm. Even though the bat didn't work, the feint of him doing that opened up the opportunity. So, right. uh, I think we have enough room to charge. Nah, you guys are, you, you need more room. That's all right, then. To it, we can do with some daggers if you want to. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
This here is War Machine. Uh, there's a table over here behind you you can look at in a minute. Uh, that's got both boards and War Machine on it. Uh, it's a tabletop miniature based game. And, uh, it's basically a war game. We put all the glue, all these models together, set them up on their stands, paint them up, which we haven't got finished painting them yet. I've started mine, she hasn't started hers yet. Um, and uh, then you play war games with them and try to kill each other. <laughs> That's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, but uh, I set up a table over here just to show everybody what it's about. And, uh, sample battle between the Horde's Beasts and the, uh, the uh, I guess, uh, mechanized robot army. And, uh, so we're just getting ready to get started. <laughs> Hopefully it's a treasure so spotted too. Do that. Use him, give me this card. Give it, keep it, give me three. Keep it, give me three, or you can discard it and I drop the card. Yeah, I can so hard to think about it. I was going to say, it's like the third. Do I give him action? Well, actually, I like the idea of having Yeah, that's kind of nice. Let you dishonor. Anything. <laughs> he likes armor. With the recent gift, I guess. Yeah. How to do it in a way that's feasible with the skills you have at home and the materials you have at home. Um, crap, I forgot my Klingon stuff. Um, <laughs> no Klingon stuff. No Klingon stuff. And what you have the budget for. Yeah. I mean, you don't have, to, most of this is made out of leather, just because it's very pliable, versatile material, but a vinyl placemat yeah. from Goodwill. You can cut them up, form them, paint them, and you've got high-tech stuff nowadays, different types of materials that you can Plastics. mold and heat. And uh, vacuum forming plastics, all sorts of neat things like that. Things to worry about, about... Oh, should we introduce yourself? Sure, okay. yes. <laughs> My name's Jennifer Campbell. I've been... Oh, jeez. I've probably been doing costumes further than anything else in my life. I started making stuff for my Barbies when I was, like, six. Because I just didn't necessarily like what was out there. So you take the end off the cap of toothpaste and spray paint it black, and it's now a cup. And just never looked back. I've been... Cheap and poor most of my life, so I wanted to make it myself instead of buying it. Uh, I'm Bert Cook. Um, you may have seen me in the demonstration earlier. Um, I have been doing, well, I have liked swords and armor all of my life, and, and got into swords as, as a um, hobby and then as a career, and um, armor goes right along with it. I have 
that handy about making things all my life, so it slipped into it pretty quickly there. Um, love armor, love the whole thing, just can't get enough of it. I've been leatherworking since 92, 93-ish. Um, picked it up as I went, uh, learned some techniques, used some imagination, put it all together here. Um, I can work steel also, it's just problematic, it takes a little bit more work. Um, I'll, I love it. And not instant gratification. No, it's not. Not quite as much as my other works for that. Um, and I find now that I am able to make a lot of things for my school and or students that like this sort of thing. Um, if anybody you know, wants to come look at anything, yeah. touch anything, oh, yeah. I mean, none of this stuff is... Um, this piece I will of, ask you to control this. Yeah, with what? I'll, I'll be right there with you. That was me. The piece on the end is from a Dawn contest piece. Um, if you're familiar with Lisner and his character Dawn from the Cry for Dawn comics, that was done for Chris, the one in the Zatanna outfit. It, a white dress goes underneath it, and that was basically they did that on leather because it had to have the rib and stuff like that. This this has had several different incarnations. It actually started out as body armor for uh, combat archery in the SCA for me. I stopped, then we were like, well, you know, I wanted some fantasy armor, so we cut this deep part into it. Then I wanted to be a fairy, so he figured out the wing mechanism for the back, and we just mounted it on this so I didn't have to make a bodice. And then I was doing a play, Velveteen Rabbit, and you have a fairy. So that's when we added the colors and the cutouts and this. Painted and strapped her in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think that's when I added much glitter so it would show on stage. Oh, yeah. Um, that the dragon was armor. his baby. Um, Blame Larry Elmore. Yeah, yeah. Blame well, Dragonlance. <laughs> well, you know, you, you read the Dragonlance stuff and you see that, well, the armor's supposed to be made out of dragon scale. <laughs> well, you watch the, or look at all the different artists from this and renditions of the dragon. The scales aren't all the little bitty things like this. They're different sizes, different shapes, different textures. Also, let's go on the assumption that the sucker is actually is a reptile and will shed. So, you know, he won't be terribly PO'd that you're wearing dragon armor from, like, you know, his cousin. Um, anyway, so the idea was I took plausible scale sizes and started cobbling armor together out of it. Um, it's lamular armor, which means it's made out of strips, very similar to Lorica Segmentata. Um, with some elements out of later period armors. Um, and we'll take a hit. Yeah, it'll take a hit. Um, as, as far as the material will go. But uh, that happened over about, and I have legs and arms and gloves to go with that. Um, you have to show you later. It happened over four years? Roughly yeah. three, three and a half, four years. Um, we built the body, body part, first. and then the arms, and then and the we legs. put the legs on it, and we finally got the helmets. Um, there is another um, incarnation of that for a much skinnier fellow. He actually looks much better in than I do. Uh, he's, he looks serpentine in it. He really does. And there's some pictures there for it. Um, leather. Let's, let's start with the material leather since we've got it here. It is pliable. You can wet it. It's called sanding it. Um, and it will shape. You can. Yeah, this was one yeah. of the first. All we did with this was, well, it didn't originally have buckles, it laced. It was much front we piece, We laced back piece. it on me, and I got in a warm shower, as hot as I could stand. That was it. And yeah, then we just warmed it. On. Yeah, wear a leotard, wear a bathing suit. This stuff gets slimy. 
when it gets wet. Right. Um, and then just worked it from the inside, wrapped me in towels, and I sat. You turned the heat all the way up and sat and watched some TV for as long as you could stand it. By that time, it, it had sort become of vaguely rigid. We packed it inside put it on for rigidity and then let it set and dry out. Samming leather means you just you just wet it with warm or cold water, depending upon your particular thing. And you can and you can work it. It will dry slowly and it will set up slowly. It also when the water will leach out some of the oils, that's the slimy part. Um, it does not get rigid for quite a while, and it doesn't get terribly rigid. You'll can flex some of the bits and pieces on that, and then flex the bits and pieces on that armor, and you'll see a difference in the process. Um, that armor mostly is for bullet or bull leather. Actually, it's a vague modern rendition of it. Um, Historically, they would have boiled it in an oil that would have set up inside of it. Would have replaced the oils in the leather, and you could form it. You form it. It's got about 10 minutes working time after a soak, and it sets up. It starts to get hard. It's still wet. It needs to be dried, but it will set up and get hard. Um, that is a halfway process. You need it in boiling water. Uh, you don't actually boil it. Boil it. Water up to boiling. Take it off. It stops boiling. You got about five minutes working time. Put your leather in it. It will fizz out of it, and that's the oils coming out of it a lot faster than it does for the regular old salmon. And you can shape it. You can compress it around something. You can bulge it out from the middle. You can crease it. You can pinch it. You can it, texture ribs, it. You can... But roughly ten minutes, it will set back up. And it will be almost as hard as it is now on the armor. And then it will need to dry. Once you dry it out, I usually seal it with something of a polyurethane varnish or something like that just to keep it from... He made a drying box, which I just think is the biggest Holly Hobby oven ever. It is. Because it's run on light bulbs. It is. I, it, it reminds me of the old Holly Hobby, Hobby ovens. I think it's hysterical. Mm -hmm. I can make about a half a suit in it. Um, you, if you mess up during that 10 minute working time, you can get the water back up to the top, boiling, set it back off, put it back in, and it will go back to working, but you, know, you can do that. Every time you do it, you take about two minutes off of working time. You can only do it about three or four times. Make sure you have a million towels you care nothing about. Right. <laughs> it will leach the tannin out of it. It will stain, it is nasty. It looks like a soup. Everywhere. Make sure you do it in a pot you don't want it anymore, or we'll never cook it anymore. Um, things to think about with for your armor, for what you're doing, your costume, where you're going, what's the environment you're going to be in, how many Are people... You, do you ever want to wear it again? Is right. it a one-time shot? You know, is it just something for Halloween? Is it something for a costume contest? Is it, some, is it armor? Is it something you want to fight in the backyard in? You know. How close do you want it to be to the character or the historical precedent? Either one, you know, depends upon where you're at, what you're doing. How much fudge room you have. Um, yeah, I've seen people do some amazing things with paper mache. Yeah, really? You know, just whatever you have at hand. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people make stuff out of paper mache that they've reused. Right. But uh, how long are you going to have to wear this? Okay. Um, like, pick, 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 pick. he's getting caught on my armor all the time. Like, we're all sitting here like this, you know, in a, in a, yeah. in a room a like this Con. that was absolutely packed. An overpacked panel at Dragon Con. They, you were like sardines. You know, do I need to worry about putting people's eyes out? You know. Um, yeah. Keep your form in mind. I know that, you know, offer creativity and things like that, but do keep your form in mind. If you're going to be doing something at a middle school, don't do Tarna from Heavy Metal. Tarna the Defender, there you go. You know, if it's something very risque for Dragon Con, you know, maybe after six, maybe after seven. And comfort, don't forget what month you're in. 
If you're in a hotel, are you going to be in and out, into hot and cold? Take care of your own comfort right. as well. I guess in the end, you're talking about like, you know, is it going to function well enough that you can be comfortable in it, and it does what it's supposed to do, and you can get around in the area you're supposed to get around Without in. basically cheesing off everybody with oh, yeah. a foot. Because now, anybody that's been to some of the larger conventions recently, I won't wear anything like this at Dragon Con anymore. Because you're so packed into some of these hallways that every time I get clicked near my eyes with a fairy wing, you really, you think of butterflies when you're a kid. Because, I mean, when you're packed in so much, I don't know, I guess it's come courtesy. Maybe do it in a less busy time. Like, 2 o'clock isn't as busy as 8. Make it a day costume. Something like that. But, functionality. You have or to have make function. them so they can collapse and move. Mm -hmm. You know, Any questions? Spikes. Yeah. Any questions? Comments? Observations? Anything anybody's aching to make? Please Possibly talk thinking us. about making? Thanks. What you get me is throw it on the table. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people would like to take the dagger and put it over here for the off hand for the cross drop, so you're doing this. Well, first of all, I can't get to anything like that anyway. Um, I put the dagger in the shadow of the sword, okay? So, that if I'm dodging things on my sword, the dagger is taken care of automatically. I don't have two things to worry about. Because if it is stuck in the other accepted position, I now am in dropping it and all sorts of things. Um, it is plainly functional, ready to go. It's easy to deal with. Put it back out there. Um, your blade probably will not flex, but I make the sheaths flexible for a reason because you'll get it caught and do that trick. That's one of the first really uncool things you'll do for the swords. You'll start walking and it, and starts, and it starts doing this. And this will happen right there. All right. So your cool factor just falls off the end of the cliff. <laughs> um, just you can drive it. Simple, easy. Doesn't you have to be a becomes part of your your function here. And last and certainly not least, revolving doors have no mercy. <laughs> have no mercy on any of this. Will eat you up. And uh, escalators. Escalators oh. are also evil. They're yeah, also evil. Big costumes. Um, any questions, ideas, problems, answers? Maybe Otherwise, we're probably going to wrap up. Yeah, we're wrapping up. You want to come up here and play with stuff? Yeah. That's fine. That's I don't have fine. a problem.